hello. Uh, my name is Diego. Uh, I work for Altinity, and uh, this presentation is about, uh, we're going to describe how object storage, the different types in, uh, the, of uh, storage uh, in the cloud. And uh, we're going to measure it, more or less, and we're going to apply this to a, a specific workload uh, using analytical databases. So uh, let's make some introductions. Uh, um, Robert Hodges this is our CEO. He's the one that came with this idea of benchmarking or doing a, a light benchmark of uh, storage in the cloud. And uh, yeah, uh, he, let's say, uh, has a day job as Altinity CEO, but he's uh, by heart uh, a geek and a database geek. And I'm Diego, I'm just a software engineer uh, in there. And uh, yeah, I also like databases a lot and uh, Python too. And uh, what we do, I mean, we do open source software. We have a, a CRD operator for Kubernetes to deploy this database, ClickHouse. And uh, we do uh, uh, also cloud services too. And uh, yeah, you can visit the web page and uh, the repos. So, what are we going to, go to talk about? It's one of the most typical forms of cloud storage. How can we measure more or less performance? And uh, what is an analytical database? I mean, we are used to Postgres. We love Postgres, and uh, but we also uh, like uh, ClickHouse and analytical workloads. So it's nice that Alvaro is here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, and all this presentation and work, it's. Uh, it's about the journey by itself. Okay, it's, it sounds like a cliche, but it's like that. It's to discover stuff. So, this is the first, uh, let's say, storage type in the cloud. It's like uh, an M an MME. It's like uh, typical uh, in your, let's say, instance. And uh, this is how it looks like, more or less. I mean, uh, you have a, a MVM is attached, and you can have different type of uh, instances. We mainly work with AWS, so you will see AWX all over. Uh, but we work with other cloud providers, but we do really like AWS. Okay, so um, that's it. And uh, they claim, I mean, mostly cloud providers, that uh, uh, IO bandwidth scales linearly uh, with the number of CPUs, and we could, we could check that uh, in the future, okay, and see that. So how did we measure it? Uh, yeah, Robert just developed some Go application uh, to do this kind of uh, testing. And uh, with a simple YAML, you just deploy the stateful set uh, in Kubernetes, and it will just measure the, the, the storage that you have uh, uh, assigned in there. So we did like uh, some simple test. We write uh, 50 files, half a gig, each of them, and uh, we read and write. And uh, let's see how this um, fares up. So for MVME SSDs, you could see that this is the right stuff. Sorry, it's kind of boring, I know, uh, all graphs and the stuff, but yeah. You could see that the write is like irregular. Why? Because there is the F-sync uh, from the operating system from Linux. That is, you just write in memory, and then you just, uh, the operating system flush all the data from memory to disk. And that is why it's done uh, asynchronously, and uh, you have to wait. So that is why you see that. But when reading, you can see that at first, we have like a, a very small packed, whoa, sorry, it's moving. It's alive, yeah. And, uh, and after reading from the, disk by itself, then you could see this is the perfect, let's say, uh, how the page cache in the operating system works. As you can see that, it's like uh, fast and it's reading really, really nicely. So, uh, as I said before, they, they, they said bandwidth scales linearly with uh, CPUs. Well, let's do a test in an i3 x large and an i3 4 x large, four times CPU, and four times uh, memory. And as we can see here, 
that it's not four times. I mean, it's only two times. And why? I mean, if we investigate and we read in the cloud uh, what are the uh, instances uh, features, you see that in i3, you have only one disk. And in i3, 4x, you have two disks. And this is the, let's say, the key stuff in here. You have to read what the cloud vendor is offering you. And if you want to test IO bandwidth in the storage, you need to be careful, because this is not going to be 4x, but it's going to be 2, OK? So this is one finding, one interesting finding. So let's move on to NMV. It's OK. Uh, let's move to, let's say, my prefer or our prefer uh, type of storage that is, uh, in this case, elastic block storage. But you could just, if you're using GCP or other provider, they have their own block storage. So how does this work, more, more or less? And I think Juan Herrera uh, just depicted more or less in his project something very similar. OK, so it's like a, uh, you have, uh, let's say, uh, your instances in the host, and then you have a storage area in the room. And what is this? It's like a big array of disks connected to the computing part. And uh, usually connection is via fiber. And uh, you have like different interfaces, to be fiber channel or InfiniBand. And you will see that it provides a pretty nice or similar performance to an MMB because it can transport MMB protocol, SCSI, uh, you name it. So this is the performance of EBS. It's very similar in RAID, as you could see, as an MMB. And it's cheaper. And it's uh, nice, because you, if you need more computing power, you just stop your instance, or you upgrade your instance to more CPU, more memory, and then you have the storage in there, untouched, pristine. So that you cannot do with NMBs in the same uh, instance. And read performance, yes, it's a little bit scattered. But then when the page cache, in this case, there is, we will see, it's, it's a cache, EBS cache. Then you get really nice performance in EBS, really nice. It's even better than uh, NMBs. So we had like uh, NVMEs, we have uh, EBS or block storage, and then we have S3 storage, the, let's say, the slowest of the three. But you will see that it has, it's, it fits in different workloads on, and uh, installations. So how does it work? It is different from block storage. It does not present you a block storage, but you work with files, and it's different, and you do API calls. You have to be careful with this because uh, every cloud provider just charges you by IPA calls, uh, the numbers, so you have to be careful. But overall, it's a nice way to store uh, information, and it's cheap, really cheap. It does not use page cache. Okay. So again, uh, because it does, not use, uh, it does not use F-Sync or cache or whatever, it just has a pretty normal write uh, profile. And reads are, let's say, slower, of course, but they are very sustained all on the, the time. So here is a little comparison uh, of the three. And you could see that in yellow, I mean, yeah, we have S3, but it's very uh, plain, very boring, but it's also nice. And then you have like EBS and NMB, OK? Although instances are different, I mean, this is just for uh, showing purposes. EBS, it's uh, behaving pretty better, I would say, than in a local MMBs. So yeah, it's a really nice add-on to, to the cloud. And you can use it Kubernetes or uh, instances or whatever. So cloud block storage is uh, king, I would say. Okay. So we measured this for, let's say, read and write I.O. And now let's move forward and try the same, but using a database. It's not Postgres. It's ClickHouse. It's different. But yeah, I mean, uh, it's a database. And uh, that's it. OK, so ClickHouse, what is the, I mean, you have to know that Postgres is OLTP. It's transactional. Uh, if you have that type of workload, please use Postgres. I mean, uh, it's parallel tested. It's, it's like that. But there are uh, new kids on the block, I would say, in 
analytical uh, that are not BigQuery or, or Snowflake. And ClickHouse is open source. Uh, it just uh, understands SQL or ANSI. It runs on whatever you want. It really ni rise, uh, runs nicely in Kubernetes. We have the operator. So if you're going to scale and do install or deploy in the cloud, please use a, a, a custom resource definition and operator. I mean, it will just give you high availability. Uh, it will give you uh, scalability. So it, it will, you will get rid of many complexities if you use uh, an operator. It's just uh, columnar. It's the main difference. You would expect databases are like row-oriented, like Postgres, but this case is columnar. It's optimized to have a, like a, be compressed the data and you read it uh, fast. And uh, it has like parallel, um, it vectorized, I mean, uh, SIM uh, type instructions that are like, uh, you could like uh, sum uh, a vector of numbers in one just instruction so that it's fast. And it's open source that it's uh, the, the best part. So, uh, what do we have right, um, really what we have, in, it's something like this. You have the pod and you have a persistent volume and uh, you can have MMBs or you can have the elastic block storage. But because you are in a node and you run Kubernetes, you, con you don't control the base cache. But you will see that uh, you don't need the base cache for this type of workloads, okay? And, uh, what did we use to measure this? I mean, you have PG bench, you have Sys bench, and you also have click bench. Still, it's a little bit long from being perfect because if you're going to measure an analytical database, you must think that analytical queries are not like uh, an, in an OLTP. They, are, they run uh, for a long time. They just usually scan a lot of data. They just compute a lot of aggregations. So you have like this profile. And uh, sadly, this benchmark is just, uh, it's not very, very realistic, I would say. Yeah, it's realistic with the commerce data, but not in all analytical um, workloads. So uh, this is, let's say, a benchmark on the NMBs. So yeah, I mean, you see the cache and the direct, and yeah, there's almost no difference. But we saw difference reading and writing files, but we don't see any difference here. So there must be something behind the scenes, and that is ClickHouse, uh, as you will see. And here on EBS, yeah, you have the cache, and as you can see, compared to this one, yeah, the cache is better. It, and you could say, yeah, it's very fast, and why the cache if you can control the base cache. Why do you have this cache here and it's behaving like that? Yeah, because EBS volumes, they have cache. They have a, a proprietary cache and uh, it's really fast to, to use them. So that is the difference here. And uh, this is a comparison between both. And you could say, yeah, but EBS is cheaper and it's more or less, let's say, uh, faster than NMB. So why use MVMEs? I don't know. Basically, it's up to you. But uh, that's why cloud storage works, uh, block storage works so nicely. And uh, that's why it's so nice to work it, with it in Kubernetes that you won't uh, feel any difference with the, re with the real hardware. So that is cool. And uh, yeah, why it's a little bit faster? Yeah, we made some. Uh, Let's say um, we made some uh, cheats. We cheated a little bit. Yeah, it's not the same instance, I3, M6A, right? Yeah, but there were, if you do the same comparison, I will guarantee that it's even better. It's still, EVS is better in terms of performance. Yeah, CPU is different. Yeah, it's, if you have a faster CPU, IO will be like uh, uh, faster. But as I said, it's not about CPU. It's if you have one, two, or three disks, that would be the key difference in the cloud. So uh, on S3, yeah, it's smaller, yeah, and it's uh, slower, of course. But 
um, you could use S3 to store, let's say, uh, other type of data, and not your hot data, but your cold data. So you can mix both of them. And this is more or less final comparison of all, and this is a logarithmic scale, as you can see, so you could check the differences uh, between uh, S3 and MMV and EVS, and it's, they just run pretty similar, but you could see that S3 is like, it has more latency, and uh, it just starts reading slower, but then it becomes faster, okay? But uh, in the end, you can ask yourself, why? And why not only having just block storage, but having block storage and object storage? And we could use both of them to just uh, satisfy different needs in our workload, yes? I mean, this is one of our conclusions. I mean, uh, you could have uh, a block storage or where all the whole data is, and you do the queries in there, but also, Little by little, because your data grows a lot and you are growing and growing. I mean, storage is, is, is not cheap. So uh, you can't have all your data in EBS volumes or in block storage volumes. You need to shift some data uh, to a cold storage because the old data you won't use uh, as, as much. So why don't you, why don't we have like that, a tiered storage, like EBS volumes for whole data and then we have some kind of cache between EVS and S3, and then we have S3. And then we automatically move data from one, from hot to cold, following some TTL rules or whatever. Well, this is how, I mean, how uh, we just set up, or how we can set up with a ClickHouse operator and do, and do get the benefits of all the cloud storage types in the cloud uh, for one analytical workload. And that is why it's nice. So apart from this, I mean, yeah, uh, we could, what did we learn today more or less? So yeah, NM, NVMe, it's not the fastest. I mean, and it's not the, the cheapest. The cheapest is, let's say, EBS or block storage. Yeah, the VM uh, affects the size in the bandwidth, and you have to read that, not only AWS, but other cloud providers. If you have one, two, three of disks, that is important. You need to, to, to think about that. Uh, ClickHouse, because it's compressed, it reads data compressed, it uncompresses in memory, and all this stuff is doing, it, it's really fast. So you won't feel the IO uh, lag. It will need to read few data, and then it will uncompress in memory and do the computation in there. So that's why in the benchmarks you did not see like a, a, a big difference uh, reading from, from, from the disk. Okay, and uh, it's important to know, yeah, the cache. I mean, if you have a cache between the S3 and the EBS volume, it's really nice. And if it's right through, even better, because you can write and you can read, not only just get the data from S3, read it. And uh, yeah, audio storage, I mean, it began like uh, being something dismissive, but right now, I mean, every major organization or startup or whatever, they just, object storage to just store data in their cold data that you can then uh, use another, like a uh, data lake or any other, uh, let's say, uh, uh, solution to manage your data and you manage the life cycle of the data. So it's really nice to, to combine both into one workload. And uh, yeah. Just to finalize some information, if you want to try the utility, it's Kyoperf. You just go to GitHub slash Altinity and you can go to the ClickHouse operator or Kyoperf or you can check our blog and that's it. So thank you very much. I hope I did not uh, bore you a lot. <laughs> not at all, not at all. Very, very good presentation. Any questions? Yes. Thank you, very interesting. And uh, just a, a quick question. Uh, the comparison you, you've done uh, are about reading, mostly, if I'm not wrong. So when making that same comparison uh, when writing, did you have the same results? Sorry, come again? <laughs> when, when writing, when <laughs> making a comparison when you are writing to the disk, yeah. only writing, 
Yeah, in EBS, EBS versus N NVMe. Yeah, it, I mean, yeah, I could, I could, I could show you. Yes, uh, this is like uh, NVMe, right? And you see the scatter in there. This is because of XF sync. If we do not use F sync here, I mean, this is NVMe, and this is EBS. As you can see, it's pretty similar. The scattering effect, very similar. Why? Because of F sync. And uh, the problem with F sync is we saw a lot of uh, discussions between, for example, Red Panda and Kafka. They were saying like, uh, yeah, uh, we have like uh, it's a more performant uh, uh, this new version of Kafka because Red Panda. They are, you don't need F sync. And basically, if you <laughs> you can ask Alvaro, if you need durability, you need F sync. I mean. You cannot tolerate to lose data. Lose data in this world is like a, a crucifixion. I mean, so you need to use F sync in the in the in the tests. I mean, that's why that's what we are going to use always. And uh, even every major database uses that in the uh, in, at the background. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, uh, you could improve numbers, yes, but uh, you will be losing. I mean, you 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 will be risking losing data. But Thank you. it's like uh, the very same. And GP3 is cheaper, faster, and uh, yeah, you won't feel the difference. And if you want to scale out or in, I mean, I want an a, a MI65X or 4X. Yeah, you just change the, the instance type, and that's it. You will have the storage in there, not a problem. Thank you. <laughs>